Alright, this is John Kola with OKRaw.com and today we have another exciting episode for you. I'm still here on my vacation in Maui checking out another really cool company that's here and I'm here to educate you guys about a very important topic today about one of my favorite foods on the entire planet that you guys should be consuming regularly. And I'm thankful that people here on the island of Maui and maybe even soon Oahu can consume more of this favorite food thanks to the company I'm visiting today. They're known as Hawaiian Superfoods and they're the home of the Maui Coconut Kefir. And uh, the Hawaiian Superfoods company, what they specialize in, they specialize in coconut based products. And even more important and beneficial than just standard coconut products, they basically uh, ferment the coconut to make an enhanced coconut product. It's like a, the best coconut product <laughs> that you could ever have. <laughs> so uh, what the company does is, in a nutshell, yeah, get it, nutshell, they, um, take a, they take wild grown coconuts here on the island, they harvest them by hand, no monkey slave labor involved. <laughs> Real people are harvesting these coconuts. They take them into their facility here that I'm visiting you guys. Now this is just a production facility. Um, you know, they don't have hours. You can't come pick up anything here. What I thought I'd do for you guys today is actually take you guys in uh, Hawaiian Superfoods and share with you guys how the coconut kefir is made. You know, if you're here on Maui, you guys are really lucky. You guys could buy the coconut kefir, one of the local health food stores, or at the uh, farmer's market, uh, the up country farmer's market on Saturdays. And actually, I was just there the other day on Saturday. And actually, um, Friday night, actually, I got food poisoning. And it was really bad. I was throwing things up out of one end, and things were coming out the other end, uh, evacuating quite quickly, as you might say. And I also had a stomach ache all night. I could barely sleep because I'd kept waking up every couple hours. I'd kind of move positions in the bed and it would still hurt. Then I'd fall back to sleep. Then I'd wake up because it would hurt again. I'd try to move around and it, it wouldn't go away. Then the next morning I did some enemas to help clean me out. That helped a little bit, but I still had some kind of stomach distress. So then I saw a uh, the Hawaiian Superfood Company at the farmer's market and I bought like 64 ounces of their coconut kefir. I drank it over the next day and uh, then my stomach was fine. So I'm not saying that's gonna happen to you, but you know what? It's the power of the coconut and the probiotics in the coconut kefir they make that can be so helpful. The owner has so many different testimonials from different people on how it can help, you know, how it's helped his customers. And it's actually quite amazing on how getting some good, healthy probiotics in you uh, could definitely change your life. So anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and head inside the Hawaiian Superfoods Company and show you guys the whole process of how they, you know, crack the coconuts, filter the coconut water, turn that into a nice uh, fermented beverage and store it and do all the crazy stuff that they do inside. And uh, yeah, it's definitely gonna be a fun journey, so uh, come along. So everything starts off here at Hawaiian Superfoods with the coconuts themselves. Now these are just plucked out of the tree just a few days ago and this pile here used to be probably like twice as high. This is an excellent use for one of those uh, cattle bins they put cattle feed in or whatever but it's holding all these coconuts until they're gonna get processed. Now uh, the coconuts are pulled down in racks and these are lowered off the tree not like dropped down like little grenades off the trees and uh, if you're wa walking underneath coconut trees watch out because you don't want a coconut falling off you and hitting you in the head that could actually be quite deadly. <laughs> so yeah they lower these guys down so they don't get cracked or injured on the way down because if it gets cracked or injured on the way down then it could actually sit and have a leak and air could get inside it and it could actually ferment and go rotten and they don't want to be adding that kind of rotten coconut water uh, to their end product. So before they uh, crack each and every one they inspect it to make sure it's all right and then they uh, basically will crack open each one, uh, drain it, filter it and then turn it into the kefir product. Now I want to stop here and talk about coconuts. You know they are one of my favorite foods and whether you're turning them into a kefir or not I want to encourage you guys to drink the coconut water. It's one of the best beverages on earth. It's been described as nature's first Gatorade. Before they made Gatorade, which is a man-made toxic substance with all kinds of different chemicals and they try to put electrolytes and minerals in there and stuff, you know, nature or God, whomever you believe in, gave us the coconut palm. And uh, inside here, it's basically filtered water from the earth and it goes through all the different cells in the coconut palm and then it's filtered in to the coconut and this is basically a nut that will then, once 
mature at an old stage will drop off literally could sit in the ocean and float across the ocean land in Hawaii or wherever and then sprout a whole new tree so this is basically just one of the largest seeds in the whole world and the water is in there for the tree to grow before it gets a source of nourishment and you know one of the coolest properties of the coconut that I really like the most is actually the what's called plant cytokines or the coconut plant cytokines that are in there and this is what keeps the coconut um, basically anti-aging. It prevents, uh, it, it allows the DNA and RNA or whatever to replicate in the coconut without getting defective genetic code so that when it's floating across the ocean for several months, you know, it could land and still be a viable seed to grow a new tree. And it said, and I believe that, you know, when we drink the coconut water, whether that's straight up coconut water or even better, the coconut kefir, we're going to get some of these plant cytokines within us that are also anti-aging for us. So it's going to keep you healthier and younger longer. And I'll let you guys know one of my personal anti-aging secrets, aside from eating high antioxidant rich foods, is drinking plenty of coconut water. I actually prefer to drink the coconut water instead of just a filtered water or bottled water. You know, this is... I'd rather have just, you know, coconuts instead of bottles, right? This is nature's packaged water, right? You could just hack this open, drink it, and then guess what? You could compost the rest out. Not like all this plastic bottle waste. It's uh, accumulating everywhere. And unfortunately, most of it doesn't get recycled. But yeah, I, I mean, in the World Wars, they said they could use actually the coconut water because it's so similar to blood plasma at, for transfusion, which is kind of cool. And there's, I think, what a Jackie Chan movie where he climbs up the tree and gets it and pops a hole in it and then makes a blood transfusion out of it. But uh, anyways, yeah, coconuts, one of my favorite foods. But the big challenge I know a lot of you guys have is getting it into the coconut safely. And they've chucked literally thousands of coconuts here with uh, zero accidents. And they do it in a really cool way to prevent all the, you know, the dirt and all this kind of stuff uh, from the coconut that's ex existing on the outside of the coconut to getting into the final product. So I think next we're gonna go ahead and show you guys their special technique they use to crack a coconut. So now I'm here with Elijah, the owner of Hawaiian Syrup Foods and home of Maui Coconut Kefir. And this is the guy, I mean, he does it all. He harvests the coconut trees, he brings them down, he opens it, and he makes every batch of coconut kefir personally to make sure it's all high quality. And this guy, I mean, I thought I was good at co opening coconuts, but this guy's the master. He's opened more coconuts than anybody I've ever met in my entire life because they go through like a thousand, a thousand plus coconuts a week, actually. So he's going to demonstrate how he opens the coconuts here with a nice sharp machete. It's very important. Yeah, a uh, lightweight machete, uh, not a very expensive one. Uh, we get like more like a cane knife. You keep it nice and sharp. You can go right into it, uh, and we'll just uh, go about it this way. This is the way the Tonga guys taught me how to do it. You go right off to the core at the top, and then you can pop the top off just like a lid. There you go. Yeah. Popped off, no watery, splashy mess. The water's not running down the side and then they pour it into a five gallon bucket with a sieve and a special coffee style, oversized coffee style filter to make sure none of that, none of those bits get into the finished product. And that no part of the coconut is wasted here. Every part of the coconut is used. Even the husk is then composted down and then turned into soil for the local area. And uh, the inside of the coconut meat is used to make a coconut yogurt, coconut milk, and some of the other different coconut products they offer. And uh, so there's a nice meat that they'll be uh, hand scooping each and every coconut out to turn into some of the other coconut products. So a nice way to oh. show you how to take that meat out, actually. So you take the side of the coconut right here and, uh, and pull what we call a spoon right off the side. So there's your spoon like that. You got your nice soft coconut meat right there. And scoop it right out. All right, I'll eat that. <laughs> yeah, coconut meat, man, this stuff is the best stuff. Now, unfortunately, most of you guys probably don't live in uh, Maui or Hawaiian Islands where you can get fresh coconut because this meat is way better than the Thai coconuts that are, you know, dipped in uh, formaldehyde, or not formaldehyde, but dipped in sulfides and thymobenzol, which is a fungicide. And unfortunately, most uh, coconut keeper companies in the States might be using the Thai coconuts, which, you know, I don't necessarily like to eat too often. But yeah, this coconut meat, 
Mmm, it's the best. So once the coconut gets cracked, they've separated out and filtered the water and then also the meat, they grade the meat. This is something very important because they make different coconut products here. And if they put the wrong meat in the wrong product, it's gonna mess up really bad. So they got uh, different uh, containers here. Here's a plastic container and they grade their coconut on the internal scale from a one to three. I think this is like a two and a half. So this is kind of getting more mature, more old, more fibrous. This would go into maybe one of their milk products. And then they got the, this product right here, which is the young baby meat. And generally they uh, crack open the coconuts, get all the meat out, and then they process that immediately. So they have the freshest uh, product. So Chef Elijah, what he's doing now, he's taking the uh, young coconut meat plus some of the water to make their uh, young coconut cream kefir, which is basically like a yogurt-like texture. Now, you know, uh, in yogurts, people think yogurt, they think immediately dairy. Now, you know, dairy does not own the word uh, yogurt or kefir. You know, there have been many other cultures around the world making different uh, yogurts and kefirs out of different things besides just dairy. And actually coconut is my favorite one. Now besides just the coconut meat, they also do something very special to the coconut water. And I would encourage you guys to do this to all your foods to know the quality of what you're getting. So uh, Chef Elijah, you wanna explain that process and what you do and why you do it? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, as you said, um, you know, we separate this out. This this uh, soft meat is what we're going to use to make the cream. You can see it's a, quite a bit different than the thicker fibrous right there. Um, so, you know, we're going to set that in the blender to to make that the the cream. Uh, and then the next step uh, is, uh, as you said, is knowing our coconut water. Uh, so the different ages of the coconut. Um, it's going to give us a different sugar content essentially. Um, so what you can get, you can get them off of Amazon or other places, $45 or less. You can get this uh, simple little tool right here. It's called a bricks meter scale. Uh, this is going to tell you your sugar content. Um, you know, so our younger green coconuts here in Hawaii, they're coming up with about a 4% content. Um, I've seen six and a half percent. Uh, uh, brick scale and that's been the sweetest uh, so the highest you've seen is six and a half for a coconut like off the scale like oh my god it's so it, good yeah it was exciting when I saw a six and a half because usually we tap at six and that's all I've seen I so see. you know one time I got one is like six and a half I'm like whoa all right we got some sugars in here now the more sugars is the more food for the fermentation so we want that sugar to create more biotics uh, so when we do separate it, our young green water goes out for drinking coconut water. Our sweeter water goes for fermenting the cream or for fermenting the coconut water for a fizzy beverage. And we'll show you that in a minute. So you just take a little eyedropper right there, put it on the scale. And uh, you can see right through, you just get a little light right there. And uh, looks like we're at five and a half percent on that take one. Take a look there. So yeah, this is a Brix Refractometer 0 to 32. You guys can pick these up on Amazon. Uh, a couple episodes ago, I really kind of go into this in detail. And yep, looks like about five and a half to me. And besides just looking at the number, you want to look at the demarcation line. It goes from like uh, white to blue and you want kind of a nice gradient. That means kind of uh, it's higher in the trace minerals. And many people might think that Brix is only referring to the sugar content, but Brix refers to the total dissolved solids, including, uh, you know, trace minerals and protein content in there. So the higher Brix generally means you're going to have a more nutritious food. Um, yeah. So yeah, Brix content, very important. All right. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, so that's, uh, so we're going to use that to, so, you know, so this is the only thing we add to the soft meat is just enough of the sweet water so we can get a, a perfect blend. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's about it. You know, we've used a few different blenders. The Vitamix stands tall <laughs> and uh, giving us the, the, you know, small batches, but you know, it, it works. So we've got three, four, five of these guys going when we're doing it uh, full scale. And uh, so it works really well. So he's gonna go ahead and turn that on and blend it on up. All right, so once he got done blending, he was doing a few things while he was actually blending. He was uh, checking the consistency. Super important, super critical to do what he's doing to make this uh, cream, coconut cream kefir and have that texture that's gonna literally stick to the spoon without adding guar gum and all these other ingredients. You know, I want you guys to be cautious when you guys buy any food product at the store. I always want you guys to pick up and read the ingredient label. You know, some of those kefir products may have guar gum and all these other kind of additives, right? Even co coconut flavor 
flavoring, sugar, who knows what they're adding in there. This is like 100% real product. And that's why I encourage you guys to make this stuff yourself at home. But if you don't want to support a local company like Hawaiian Superfoods here, you know, that makes it fresh, that I've inspected their whole place, man, they, they're doing a really good job here making some legit stuff. All right, so what do we got now, uh, Chef right, Elijah? So we got it nice and, uh, you know, we got a nice what? thick blend. All right, so now we got is we got the coconut cream mixture. Look at that nice, really rich, thick consistency. It's going right into the big pot. Big, they make individual batches that go into one large batch, all batch made, inspected by the chef. So yeah, once we, uh, you know, so we'll blend these small batches, we'll get a big enough pot. So what we do is we bring this up to about 95 degrees with our biotics in there and then, uh, and then, then bottle for fermentation. Um, you see it's uh, just a little bit like this, but those fats, once we get fermentation and chilled, it'll come to a nice, uh, to a nice hold. Uh, really thick. This is just amazing just in the way it is. Um, but it's untouchable to what we could ferment and to make this kind of product. So it always makes me happy uh, to, to, to see this happening. So the next step of making the coconut cream kefir is uh, heating it up and uh, actually adding the live culture. So uh, what's this live culture you're using, Chef Elijah? All right, so uh, these, these are our cultures that we, that we have shipped in. We overnight them to save from, you know, getting dragged out through the mail system and getting UV, you know, zapped. And, you know, so it's very important if you're having your bacteria shipped to you, have them overnight so they're not sitting around. Um, yeah, because they should be under refrigeration constantly, right? They should always be in refrigeration. So, yeah, a lot of those bacteria that you're finding on the store shelf to ferment with, I would not, I don't recommend those. I would find one that stayed uh, in refrigeration. Um, you know, Donna Gates is a really yeah. nice source to body ecology. It's a great book. She talks a lot about coconut kefir. You can get your cultures and enzymes from that company. Uh, another company that uh, that I that I work with is Wilderness Family Naturals, yeah. and they are experts on on the probiotics and and fermentation. So uh, the bacteria are sent to us. We inoculate the coconut. Uh, with our high, the highest sugar contents or 6%, that's what we absolutely want to make. Um, so we actually do a couple fermentations uh, to, to introduce these bacteria to the coconut sugar. So we, we do a couple positive ferments mm -hmm. to know that we've, we've, we've made a good transfer and then that third fermentation is what is actually going out to the public. Wow, so that's actually a lot higher quality than just putting the stuff you get in from the mail and then putting it in your batch because now the, the bacteria have been living on coconut sugars for a couple of generations and the ones that love the sugars are thriving and hanging out in there, right? That, that's right, that's right. So, you know, we know that we're getting a positive ferment before we're creating anything that's going out to the public. So high quality. Yeah, yeah, we do. We take as many steps as possible. It's a lot of man hours and a lot of work to climb <laughs> yeah. the trees, as, as you saw us going up the tree. and. Um, uh, and getting them in here and cracking them. So the last thing we want to do is, you know, we're, we're talking, you know, to fill this pot, we're talking over 500 coconuts. Yeah, to fill a lot of pot. work. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of work, you know, so we're looking at, you know, for 15 to 20 gallons of cream, we're cracking that, you know, upwards of 1500 coconuts a week. Wow. Just to make that, that level that one of batch. pure coconut kefir cream. Um, you know, so we want to take every precaution up until that point to make sure that you the know, batch doesn't go bad because now you waste it. If it goes bad, you lost so much man hours and labor and coconut material. One bad coconut it can One ruin bad the batch. Coconut, you lose the whole batch. Wow. You know, so so we, we take every every step that we can. So you know, so this is we've already inoculated this. This is a really happy ferment. Um, some something to keep your mind, uh, you, you know, to your senses around fermentation. Uh, if you get a really uh, eggy, sulfury, like heavy sulfur, eggy kind of smell, you've got some microbe in there that wasn't positive, mm. and we want to pull that out. And you know, so a lot of times we can smell that. We we get a nice, you know, you can you can. You get smell the freshness. Sauce. You can smell the freshness <laughs> of it. You know, nice and bubbly. Oh yeah, it just smells like fermented coconut. <laughs> right, right, and it's nothing clean. else. Yeah, it's, it's clean. It's a, it's a clean smell. Yeah, refreshing. Kind of like walking out in the forest. 
right? Yeah, in the coconut forest. Um, so you know, so we've got uh, you know we've, we're going to have a total of about five gallons of of, uh, of cream in here. So we're going to use about this much. Yeah. So that he's using the proper amount for what he's uh, fermenting. So of course, you know, if you're just buying some starter culture. You guys are going to have to do your own calculations. <laughs> right, right. That's uh, something. Yeah, we've we, we've worked on that. Uh, we've worked on that for years. As we as we've, we've as we've grown to uh, be able to do larger batches, we, we we started doing a couple farmers markets uh, back in 2011, and I bought 25 coconuts <laughs> and cracked them and did a little bash. And uh, like I said, we're you know upwards of 1,500 coconuts a week now. So we we've continued to learn to. How, how to keep this process. You know, that's a, the fermentation process, uh, as, as, as you know, is, is it, it, you gotta take care of them. You're creating life, yeah. and so there's a process to it. And when we get that process down, it's quite easy. But uh, scaling the process is hard. Is it, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can do one or two coconuts at home yourself really easy, but when you're trying to do 1,500 coconuts, man, it's it pretty difficult. Now, what he's doing now is he's got a little burner here, and he's monitoring the temperature to make sure it's around the right temperature for the coconut uh, ferment that he's making. And this temperature needs to be around uh, you know 90 degrees, around 90 degrees, maybe 95 at the max, and it shouldn't be any hotter than us. And, I mean, this is something very important to me, right? If it's uh, hotter than us, it's killing off you know, uh, vital nutrients, and because it wouldn't live if it was, uh, I don't know, anyways. <laughs> so why don't you take it away, tell, tell more about this, uh, the heating process and what that's, what that's doing to the uh, coconut ferment. Well, yeah, so, you know, if we think, if we look at ourselves as this being our fermentation, you know, like you said, we don't, we, we don't need to be any higher. That's a perfect environment, you know, so anywhere from that, you know, 80 to 95 degrees is a perfect environment. Food, time, and temperature is what yeah. creates bacteria so as a as a french chef i had always learned how to keep the bacteria away from our food uh, and then coming into the world of medicine food and fermentation i was learning how to keep positive bacteria in in a, in a contained environment um, so our temperature uh, food time and temperature so we know we, we showed you how to get the sugars uh, so we so we know that we're getting enough food in there your ratio of how many positive biotics that we need to activate that so our microbes and our bacteria are on the on the positive high level and that way once we get those positive bacteria and microbes to a higher level then the negative ones cannot survive survive yeah. right so there's an intelligent design here that happens naturally and as we talked about before we can pick a coconut out of the tree we call them sparkling coconuts it's already doing its own natural uh, fermentation process and in, in Hawaii the kahuna would know and and you know it was common knowledge that if you had some stomach issues or things like that you know eat the sparkling coconut and wow. in their mouth so it's common knowledge in, in indigenous in the indigenous world um, so we're just learning how to do that now uh, so we can provide these products in a way that's FDA approved health department approved so we're doing it and and, and following our system so we're making sure that we're putting only positive uh, life out there for us to be consuming. Cool. So. Yeah, that's one of the really cool things that I never thought about before. You know, I mean, if you're just buying a coconut keeper product from the mainland and they're having to import the coconuts onto the mainland to make the coconut product, they're probably not getting any naturally fermented coconut uh, on the tree. And naturally fermented coconuts on the tree, who knows what kind of beneficial probiotics in there. All I know is when I drink a fresh coconut that's uh, I call them a champagne coconuts off the tree. They taste amazing and my body just lights up. But that's getting to go into uh, the coconut products here as well as a side benefit. Right, right. Yeah, and that would be the next step for us to find out what those natural occurring bacteria are so we could see how they might differentiate from the ones that we're you know we're getting from the lab so we know exactly what we're putting in here and we've learned that every different strain of bacteria works differently in function of whether it's your organ or your liver or your heart or your colon you know so the more the more positive variety the yep, better absolutely and so that's where a kefir is quite different than a yogurt is that we're getting a larger variety of bacteria that's going to sustain the overall better health benefits awesome right? So that's really, really, really fun part. So the next thing we do, you know, we ferment uh, small batches. We go in these half gallon jars with the cream. Uh, so we just fill these uh, about half full uh, because what's gonna happen is as it uh, starts to warm up and do its thing, uh, the, the fats uh, and the gases, this is gonna rise. 
Uh, so, so we fill it about half full here. We leave the expansion room uh, because as it as it as it grows and warms up, it's going to just like a sourdough bread. It you know, rises. It rises, right? So we're going to get that rise. Uh, also, that's where a kefir differentiates from the yogurt is a a, a yeast activation. Uh, that's going to give our fermentation a faster rise for more biotics. Now the yeast inside of a kefir ferment is a vitamin B complex. So that's very important for you to know when, when we have a lot of issues with our digestive systems and we're seeing that yeast has a major effect in our, our candida and, and other processes. Um, so we want to keep those out. So we want to stay away from a negative yeast and understand the world that there are positive and yeah. negatives. Beneficial probiotics or beneficial bacteria and uh, harmful bacteria and beneficial yeasts and harmful yeast. Unfortunately, most of you guys have ever heard, heard of all the uh, harmful yeasts out there. Right, right. So it's it's good it's good to learn that difference. So this is it. We got it. We do a, we do a, a closed fermentation. We don't want uh, any mold spores or mm. anything else airborne. Uh, in, the, in the perfect environment, go for it. You, you know, uh, open air sauerkraut fermentations, uh, old school German style with the crock pots. If you're the environment that you're in is, is good for that, uh, more the power to you because as we just said, there's positive and negative, negative. bacteria. So you could introduce some positive just from your environment if you have a good environment. <laughs> right, right. And inoculating it with, with your local airborne bacteria. Yeah, I mean, look at sourdough bread in San Francisco, man. That's like world famous because they got the local bacteria in, in San Francisco that makes their sourdough bread different than every other one. Right, <laughs> right. And that's how it happens. So so we're going to keep this like this. We've got a, uh, we've got stainless steel boxes that we can monitor the temperature in. Uh, we fill these. We go for a solid 24 hours with our cream and about 18 hours on our soda for a minute. Mm. Um, and that's going to, you know, so after about after 24 hours, keeping it right at that 85 to 90 degrees, we pull that out, refrigerate, and then we're uh, then we're going going into a bottling right after that. Cool. Awesome. So as you guys just saw, pretty much the whole process of making uh, the coconut cream kefir product. Now I'm here at the end of this video with uh, Elijah Monahan, who's the chef and owner of the company here that makes all these products. Most of them he makes with his own two hands and opening many coconuts himself. And uh, you guys saw the process of making this, uh, this one right here, this product, the cream. So uh, after he puts it into that little bottle, he ferments it. And uh, how long is it uh, sitting there in the fermentation box where you're controlling the temperature? Uh, 24 hours for the cream. 24 hours, and then after you take it out, then it goes in the fridge and it could last how long? Uh, yeah, so before we go into a bottling, I like to let it chill for a solid 12 to 24 hours to set. Oh, so out of the out of the fermentation yeah. box before into the, the fridge. No, into, straight into the refrigerator. Oh, straight into yeah. the fridge. Right. Right. So after the fermentation box into the refrigerator, uh, I like it to do you know another solid 24 hours of resting in the cooler. I see. To set the product before it goes out. Before we bottle it. Oh, I see. Know? Okay. And, and then and then you know just so we're getting a chill process, then we can go into bottling. Um, and, uh, and and out to the market. So from tree to to the store shelf, we're we're getting it done in, in a week. Wow, that's amazing. And so on the water product here that actually I was drinking earlier, you like to call it the uh, the soda. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. though there's it's all natural, sweetened by you know uh, the natural coconut water that has the high pH that you guys saw earlier. Um, how long does this take? Because it's a similar process that you guys just saw, but it, they don't have to blend up the meat, obviously. Yeah, so same process. We bring it up to about 85 degrees, inoculate it with the starter, um, and then uh, the, the water, we're, we're done in about 14 to 16 hours. Uh, the lower the sugar content, the longer it takes to ferment. So mm. that's a way that you can watch if you're doing your own fermentations uh, and, and why that brick scale is important uh, is to adjust your time of fermentation. So less sugar, longer time to ferment. More food, more sugar, the quicker it'll ferment. Uh, so with our five to six percent, we're, we're doing about uh, 18 hours, uh, 15, 18 hours. Um, and I do love to call it soda. Uh, it creates its own natural live effervescence. It's not a, a forced CO2. We, you know, by by fermenting right inside of the jar, we're we're containing that CO2. So you get a beautiful fizzy beverage 
uh, all natural, so an all natural live soda, you know, co Co uh, probiotic coconut. Yeah, and you know it's a lie because if you look at the top, the top, the top is kind of bulging out. So this is not a bad thing in your soda. It's actually a good thing, right? Yeah, that's a great thing in my world. Um, you, you, you know, for cosmetics in the store, yeah, some people might find that a little odd. Uh, <laughs> it's a broken can, um, but for me, when I go into my refrigerator and I want a bottle, I go for the one that cracked the top because I knew it, it got a solid ferment. Yeah, and it's still alive and living in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so that that's you know. So we saw the cream. Uh, you know, that's that's how you know the water. Same thing. Uh, this is a product we're making on labels for right now. So we'll be able to hit the stores with this really soon. Uh, this is taking that 3.0, that really hard dense meat. We blend that, uh, put it through a press, and strain all the extra fiber out. That gives us a really beautiful raw coconut milk. And then we activate this as well. Now this one we do a uh, about a two to three week cold ferment. Uh, so we put a high dose of the live cultures in the milk. Uh, that way those microbes and bacteria can take a positive charge uh, and we get a, a really nice, and, and the reason why more time is because by the time you buy this, I want the probiotic count to be high. Mm. I can put the probiotics in there and send it straight out to the store right away, uh, but I want to make sure that we've staged it in enough time that you're going to get a positive bacteria, a positive probiotic in there. Uh, before before consum before consumption. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's very important, you know, and I think it's sad that a lot of companies that may be selling different kefir probiotics, kombucha products, they make it and they cook the hell out of it and then they just take some powdered bacteria and put it in there and say, oh, we got a kefir, we got a kombucha. And it's happening, guys. So that's why I want you guys to, you know, have, uh, you know, uh, support local companies where they have full transparency. Like I was able to show you guys the whole process here. You know, I trust the coconut kefir, uh, you know, here made at a Hawaiian superfoods that Elijah makes. Cause I mean, I have seen it. He's, this is like totally legit stuff. Some of the best coconut kefir I've ever had. So uh, Elijah, another thing I want to ask you that's very important is, you know, why did you even start this company in the first place? This is a lot of work, right? You're popping so many coconuts a day, a week, a month, and you're here just working tirelessly hours to make these healthy foods uh, to get the people of the local area of Maui and hopefully maybe other islands soon um, healthier. Yeah, uh, the inspiration came from my own sense of healing. So uh, I was a corporate French chef, sushi, culinary, uh, uh, worked at a hotel. So I, I started on the East Coast and found my way uh, over here to Hawaii. Um, and so the concept of food medicine came into my world uh, around age 30. Um, and uh, it, it couldn't have come at a better time because I was certainly down the road of most Americans um, and especially being a chef I ate a lot and drank a lot and and you know lived that lifestyle high stress uh, kitchen work um, so it was my own pursuit of health the inspiration uh, came to me to use food as medicine opposed to the traditional culinary where it was all about making it look beautiful and taste amazing, good, yeah. um, which is, you know, corn, wheat, dairy, sugar, and meat. Um, <laughs> so, so it was a really wild place for me to have that, that Revelation. background yeah. and then to take all of those elements out and go, what are you going to cook now? Um, and so for my own healing, um, the, the coconut came to me fermenting the coconut. Uh, made a batch for myself. Uh, at that time, I was in about a six month. I was in about my sixth month of a candida cleanse. Oh wow! Um, you know, so basically, I was eating kale and, and lemon juice. <laughs> I didn't have any of this information. I was learning it at the same time. So I'm, I, I just you know went on this candida cleanse concept as I'm studying uh, for my uh, uh, nutritional consulting uh, degree, which you know anybody can do the AANC and uh, which I recommend to anybody just for your own sense of education since we we're, weren't we're born into a world that promoted this sort of knowledge for our, our health and existence through food. So let food be thy medicine. Uh, Hippocrates yeah. became the label on my cafe when we had it going here. Um, and uh, so it, it, um, it was just so profound for me to to be able to make this yogurt style cream and this soda style uh, that tasted amazing but yet gave me such a positive um, uh, reaction that I I wanted to share it mm. uh, and so I, I picked up 25 coconuts and, and made a batch and went to my first farmers market uh, that was almost seven years ago now and and now we're processing you know anywhere from you know 900 to 1500 coconuts a week and distributing all over Ireland uh, it, it is it's a lot it's it's, it's 
it's extreme work. Uh, you know, we've got guys hanging out of the trees, <laughs> you, you know, 35 feet in the air, lowering racks down. It's what we do. Um, the the beauty of it is, you know, especially when you're on an island, it gives you a really wonderful visual of what it's like to be in a community that needs to be sustainable. Mm. Um, and that is just as rewarding to me um, to be working with the community uh, directly and feeding the community directly on a very localized uh, uh, and cultural mm. uh, aspect um, uh, to, to feed that, that local sustainability and why it's so important uh, for us to be focused on creating food locally uh, and stepping away from this highly processed uh, uh, every bit of poison. It, it literally is poison with the, the diabetes taking rampant in yeah. the world today, obesity, uh, leaky gut, irritable bowel, you know, this is all coming from processed foods. So getting back to whole foods, um, you know, the coconut is, you know, is, 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 is it's a superfood in, in its nutritional level. Um, but being able to use that as a source for fermentation to give us the added benefit of probiotics and sustainable life. So once we ferment our product, raw coconut, you know, you've got about 10 days on the shelf. Once we've fermented this, we've got two months to four months wow. of shelf life refrigerated, uh, which, which is remarkable uh, for us to get that much life out of, out of that much more extended life out of it. Uh, you're still getting your live enzymes. You're still getting your your nutritional values of the raw coconut, minus the sugar, which sometimes can be the issue, and uh, and then adding that probiotic life. Awesome. Yeah, I mean this stuff is some of the best stuff. As I said, you know, I had some of this stuff just the other day, and it, it I believe strongly that it helped my uh, food poisoning issue that I had myself. And I mean, uh, let's ask uh, Elijah another very important question. Elijah, why would you say it's more important to drink something like uh, your coconut kefir instead of taking like white probiotic supplements or the powders that you might buy at the health food store? Yeah, yeah, it's a really great question. Um, you know, and it's something I try to uh, relay this to as many people as, as I can. As they, you know, I do farmers markets still to this day and I talk to a lot of people. Education is everything to me. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, from my understanding, when, when you're looking at a probiotic pill versus a live fermented food, you have an active culture versus a live culture. This is alive, it's in a positive environment, it's happy and thriving. Um, so when you consume that, it's going to be able to go to work immediately on aiding in digestion or healing the colon. Uh, which is really important. You can use this product in different ways. You can use it as daily maintenance for a simulation and, and a positive GI tract, or you can use it to heal and cleanse. So we're stepping away from all of our other foods and we're eating a lot of this to clean the colon, to get that sludge off the side of the colon tract. Uh, you know, so, you know, we could look at Ayurvedic style medicine where, you know, you've got a cooling, uh, you know, this style product is cooling, this style product is warming. So it has a lot to do with the fats and the comfort and the style of your body. So if you're waking up hot, you want to start your day with this. If you're waking up cold, you want to start your day mm. with this. Uh, for best colon therapy, I have found that the, uh, the cream style kefir uh, on an empty stomach right at bedtime oh. gives us uh, some of the best benefits. You know, we've ideally we've quit eating dinner a couple hours before bed. Uh, just like everybody I know, sometime between <laughs> eating dinner and going to bed, that snack guy comes in and goes, I need a snack. Um, and so I like to, you know, make little fun desserts with the coconut kefir mm. cream, whether it's just by itself and enjoying it like that, maybe a light amount of fruit, some superfoods, you know, you can do cacao nibs and goji berries, some hemp seeds, you can make a little muesli bowl out of it, uh, which is really nice as well, you know, using it as a, as a dish, um, but, you know, plain as itself. Um, where it's at awesome yeah i mean this yeah. stuff is alive it's activated it's ready to go to work in your body whereas you know some of those pills are just freeze-dried bacteria that number one may or may not be alive you don't know that because maybe they weren't refrigerated on the truck ride or on the ups shipment to the health food store and then they got to come in live within you and then go to work and then all of a sudden they're flushed out of your body where these are already active and in much higher counts ready to go to work once you drink it Right, right. Yeah, getting back to that point, the question that you asked, you know, so from, from my understanding, if we're eating these active pills, we're, we're, we're kind of doing this internal fermentation, which can create a lot more bloating and a lot more mm. gas, and that's not really what we want to do. We want, to, we want our foods to be fermented 
And first. That, that first, and that's going to give us a more positive um, system. It's a it's a more positive system. So anything that we can do, I think probiotic pills could be there. It could be good for emergency mm. or you know maybe even traveling if you can't get to a good fermented food. I'm not going to say that they're all bad, but you know if we could focus on on fermenting food and, and, and making that a, a rich part of our diet is live fermented foods. I mean, yeah, I like to encourage you guys to do good, better, best. Like my brother, if he just had probiotics and just took them, that'd be better than not doing anything because he's not doing anything now. But I mean, better than that would be just drinking this stuff every day. But unfortunately, he doesn't live here on Maui, so he can't get it. <laughs> and he's not gonna even in his wildest dreams think about making this stuff. I mean, I'll make this stuff at home, but my brother would never do that. So yeah, some pills, that might be better than not doing anything at all. But hey, let's do the best you know what, uh, and drink some pre-fermented products. I mean, even better than just taking your little probiotic pills is, you know, blending up some uh, nut nuts with some water, some even better, yeah, coconut water, and then add some of your probiotic pills, capsules to that to ferment that, to activate them, and then eat them. If you don't wanna, you know, buy pre-made stuff, or if you don't have access to pre-made stuff like we do here on Maui. Uh, so Elijah, another question I want to ask you is regarding other fermented beverages. So I know another real popular fermented beverage out there is kombucha. Everybody thinks kombucha is like the best thing since sliced bread. Uh, you know, I made a video here on Maui actually a couple years ago with Corey from uh, one of the kombucha companies local and we talked about it. And you know, I got a kombucha company owner to talk about that, you know, it's not something you should might have every day and it's, uh, it's something to good have, as, have, have sometimes as a treat, you know, and I would agree with that. You know, on the other hand, I would, I'd like to drink this. I would drink this stuff if I had it every single day of my life because I believe it's much more beneficial than kombucha. So uh, what are your comments on uh, that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, from, from my perspective, not to be biased, but you know, just from, <laughs> from edu educational aspects, um, um, kombucha is uh, we, we talked about positive yeast and negative yeast a lot of times the kombuchas that I'm that I'm finding will give me an alcohol buzz immediately mm. uh, and if you've been able to step away from alcohol and that's not a part of your life uh, you can feel it you can really feel it when you when you have these kombuchas you got the co2 charge so when you're forced co2 charging these beverages what happens is is that actually the co for co2 charge kills the bacteria no way kills the bacteria. I've never liked any forced CO2 carbonation of any beverage, including kombuchas, but I didn't know that. That's, so that's an important part. Because so. it, it, it basically imbalances the beverage to a, a point where it wouldn't be natural. Right, and wow. so good, better, best, you know, kombucha is probably better than some, so, some, yeah. some of our other beverages that, that, that we've been feasting on. Um, so we, we just keep finding ways to make it all better. Um, you know, so we got the yeast. Uh, another really important thing is the the acid content of kombucha. Mm. It will literally eat the enamel off of your teeth. Wow. You know, so some of some of our you know kombucha is big here. It's it's growing big in, in many places in the world. Uh, one of our best uh, dentists here. I see him every week. He comes to get my product, and uh, and and he he's, he he. He preaches, you know, lay off the kombucha. It's eating the enamel. It's rotting your teeth. Wow. You know, so that's something something to take into consideration. You know, so do research on how to protect your teeth from highly acidic foods. You know, this is we're we're seeing a lot of problems starting right here. You know, uh, around that. So, um, so yeah. So that's you know that's the that's the difference between what you're going to find with a, a kefir ferment product opposed to a kombucha ferment product. So more beneficial bacteria than less. So number one, and number two, this is, is this an alkaline food right here? It's, a, it's an alkaline forming food, yes. You know, you're still gonna have, you know, talking about the enamel of the teeth, this, this still has its effect. Yeah. You know, so learn health, learn the health of taking care of your teeth, rinsing gently after, you know, 20 minutes of consuming a product. So if you're still on kombucha, you know, that's fine. There could be worse things to be doing, yeah. um, but, you know, 20 minutes after you drink that, do a light rinse in your mouth and get that acid back off of the enamel of your teeth. You're, you're, a lot of health uh, can be found right here in your teeth. Absolutely, yeah, I like to uh, rinse out with like a baking soda water to try to like, uh, you know, do the opposite. And especially even when drinking just orange juice or pineapple juice, I find, you know, my, those are highly acidic foods also. And I like to rinse with that uh, mixture as well. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what are some ways you could use the kefir besides just drinking it straight up? I mean, just drinking this stuff straight up. This is a ginger lime flavor that I'm drinking today. It's amazing to me. It tastes like, and now uh, it's, this is not as sweet as soda. Like my girlfriend, she's addicted to some certain kombucha sometimes because like they don't ferment off all, all the sugar. This is already really low sugar to begin with. And this has a nice, uh, you know, flavor. 
not sweet, but just effervescent and a really nice nice depth of flavor and it just really lights up my mouth and it has that carbonation if you guys are addicted to kombucha for the carbonation this has that carbonation that you're looking for but without a lot of the negative benefits but what are some ways you could use this in it you know besides just drinking it straight uh you know i like to make a couple different tonics uh using it so you know i'll mix some goji berries uh some camu camu powder a little orange oil uh, a little magnesium powder, something like you know, something like that. So that was uh, w one of my drinks that I had here at the cafe oh, yeah. was the super tang. Oh, yeah. uh, so it was taking that old idea of, of tang flavored oh, cool. uh, orange drink, um, and so using it as a tonic. So you can mix it different ways, uh, like that. But really, you know, it's it's perfect in the form that it is, mm. just in the way that it is. You know, uh, it aids in the assimilation. So you know, I like to put some of the the cream kefir in my superfood smoothie in the morning. Mm. Um, you know, if we have a clean colon and we're we're adding a little bit of you know the right amount, you know, two to four tablespoons is a daily maintenance dose of this cream. Uh, so putting that in your superfood smoothie now it's going to aid in the assimilation of your superfoods, right? So once we get the colon clean, we go through our healing process, then we think about our our daily consumption, you know, our, our daily ability to assimilate the foods that we are eating. Yeah, I mean, I want to stress the importance of the microbiome inside you the microbiome or your beneficial probiotics and yeasts and bacteria are very important for us you know they comprise part of our immune system they help keep us healthy help ward away disease but also they help digest your food and this is very important in the standard american diet and most foods they're literally especially if you're taking antibiotics they're nuking all your probiotics and when you're eating standard american diet processed foods high animal food diet you're not feeding them to encourage the reproduction and uh, so it's very important to get those guys into you because as as time goes on there'll be more and more research on how different probiotics could do different things for you. i mean there's probiotics that could actually just make you feel good so maybe you won't have to take those antidepressant medicines there's probiotics they've determined in skinny people that maybe large people or overweight people don't have that ke helps keep people skinny not to say that this is gonna make you skinny or anything like that but i'm sure drinking this stuff along with a good healthy plant-based diet rich in fruits and vegetables with high fiber that are going to feed the probiotics you know, will definitely keep you healthier. Absolutely, yeah. And so, you know, just to point that out, you know, your serotonin is created in the colon. Mm. You're, you know, so serotonin is the hormone that helps us feel good. Uh, our vagus nerve is our main nerve. It's our stomach brain connection. Uh, your candida, your negative yeast and parasite, they go directly for that nerve. Wow. Right? So keeping our colon clean, that, that helps keep that vagus nerve free and clear of that. It's absolutely going to make you feel better. When we're feeling better, we tend not to emotionally eat. That's mm. what a lot of people do. Yeah. That's when you go to your glutens and your creams and, you know, so we fall back on a lower vibration we fall back to lower vibrational foods it's all part of a system so the more that we consume these positive products keep the gi tract keep the vagus clean free and clear of candida parasite and negative yeast we're ultimately going to feel better we're ultimately going to want to make those better choices wow now besides just the probiotics or the beneficial you know bacteria and yeast inside this product this product is made from coconut one of my other favorite superfoods that we haven't even talked about yet so <laughs> elijah what are some really good properties of the coconut that you like that people should be aware of i mean one of the ones that important to me is the mcts or medium chain fatty acids yeah yeah medium chain triglycerides uh so what you know there it's an open-ended molecule essentially is what that is and so it can attach to free radicals in the bloodstream and help and help pull those out and, and cleanse so it, so the the world of saturated fat and coconut uh was really mis misconceived mm -hmm. back in the 80s when they said go eat your you know hot your your hydro uh, vegetable oils hydrogenated and, uh, I, I, right exactly so you know so there's really a lot of false information out there uh, that came from marketing a product and those are really bad hydrogenated oils trans fats do not eat those right right they gum up they they clam up they're they're free radicals you think about you, you know just just shard, basically shards of glass floating through your mm. th uh, through your system and just wreaking havoc on everything that they could touch so the mct oils are certainly going to help with that uh, the the cream this cream style with that young uh, coconut meat that soft meat is water soluble wow right so it can absorb through our through our colon uh, through our stomach lining and feed our bloodstream faster easier um, than the, the older meat that that you know can take its toll on your liver mm -hmm. and your gallbladder so depending where any of you might be in your healing process so it's really important for us to know where we are 
so we know where we need to go. And so different, and all these products obviously from fresh raw coconut are going to be good for you. Uh, some people um, need that higher fat, fat content. They need to put weight on. Yeah. They've, they've gotten too small. They've gotten too skinny. They've cleansed too long. You know, so it's time to put that good. You know, and using the good fats like fresh avocados, coconut meat, uh, macadamia nuts. These are great ways for us to get those good fats. You know, so the fat isn't bad. Good yeah. fat is good for you. So it's really important. Um, so you know we make the we make the milk product. It's got the you know the more mature. So you're going to get more of those MCT oils. We got the young the young uh, MCT oil that's going to show up. Uh, your fresh raw coconut water. You're getting your electrolytes. You're getting yeah. your natural electrolytes. What is that? It's a compound of nutrients. That's what electrolytes are. So it's really important to know exactly what that is. Uh, so it's you know really funny thinking about the movie Idiocracy. You know and Gatorade on their plants. You know, <laughs> it's got electrolytes. So you know electrolytes do matter to us. We can have electrolyte in balances which can change our blood it can change and once once our blood is not working at uh, a high operational value our fourth colotic artery is is uh, clogged from those bad fats we're not getting blood to our brain your heart's working harder you know so we start seeing you know a lot of heart diseases with stress today showing up um, so all all of this matters for us to have a full functional system that's keeping us in our our vehicle primed and ready to carry our spirit awesome awesome yeah i mean the electrolytes are super important not just any old electrolytes i like to get my electrolytes or the trace minerals from the fruits and vegetables including the coconut because when the nutrients go through the coconut palm or through a tomato plant or through a cucumber plant the minerals are transformed into a way that our bodies could uh, you know basically uh get the new get the minerals out of you know it, it, the charge has changed so that's very important, you know, if you're taking a Centrum supplement or maybe Gatorade that's not, it's not plant-based minerals, you're not going to absorb them. So they're just going to go right through you and not really do you any good. That's so that's right. very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's trace minerals. I mean, that's essentially what the coconut is. Exactly. It's thriving on is trace minerals from the ocean air. You know, coconuts grow best uh, no more than 900 feet off of the ocean. Um, so it's getting that 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 good sodium, that, that those trace minerals straight from the ocean, you know, like the... Um, uh, phyto, marine phytoplankton oh, trace wow. minerals, right? So that's you know that's that's what this plant thrives on, and that's what it's bringing to you. So that's the in the in the, you know eight thousand BC Hindu, they named the coconut tree the Kalpa Vriksha, which literally translates to the plant that gives all that is necessary to live. Uh, so we this is very old knowledge mm. uh, that we now get to bring back and, and and share that. So you know, and my legacy goal behind what I've you know this this plant has changed my life, uh, and and you know I, I feel blessed to be the the generator of creating this this product you know that's been made for a long time but you know I've put it into a process where we can deliver it to the community there's there's you know we have older folks here that can't open coconuts anymore mm -hmm. you know I, I I want everybody to empower themselves if you can get coconuts and crack them open and ferment them to ferment them yourself go for it if you can't do that and you're here on Maui that's what yeah. we're here for take care of that you know not everybody can climb up a 35 foot tree and lower racks of coconuts out so we get to do that so you know my my goal behind not only serving my community uh, but is also to give back to these islands and that's something that, that we talk about a lot here as you uh, coming here a foreigner coming here from the mainland uh, into this cultural world um, and, and being served with so much life and beauty and you, you see that reflection and you find a way, how can I give back to that? And so my legacy goal behind what this has brought to me is to find a way to replant these islands with coconuts for the future. Wow. Uh, we, we, we need more. Yep. Uh, we're, we're a local based company and we will continue to be a local based company because there's simply not enough coconuts left on these islands uh, to, to export the amount of coconut that it would be to take care of California or the rest of the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so that's, that's, that's what we want to do. You know, we want to see, uh, we, we want to see reforestation of, of the cultural coconut to bring health and life back to the islands. Yeah, that's an excellent, excellent goal to grow more plants. And I mean, we all live on an island, you know, if trucks stop running, you guys probably wouldn't have food no more. And that's why, you know, my other channel is really popular, Growing Your Greens, teaches you guys how to grow your own foods. I haven't done too many videos on coconuts yet, though, but um, 
Nonetheless, uh, I want to ask you another question, actually. So if somebody had the choice between like maybe buying a bottle of this stuff or this stuff, or like maybe like some sauerkraut, what do you think's a better buy and what do you think's, you know, the best bang for the buck? Like for a fermented food product. Yeah, you know, I, I tell you, you know, I, I'm obviously gonna be very biased for selling my <laughs> obviously. coconuts, right? Um, but I, the wide variety of fermented foods is always good for yeah. you. I eat sauerkrauts and kimchi and natto, yep, you know, yep. I even have some natto once in a while. I was a sushi chef for a minute, <laughs> you know, so I acquired a, uh, a, a, a the ability to eat natto it's not the easiest uh, it's, dude, it tastes <laughs> fine man i love natto and yeah. you guys should try it too really yeah. good stuff yeah challenge yourself <laughs> it's fine yeah you know so, People trip. so you know a variety of fermented foods yeah. um you know the the, the and, I, and i mentioned this to you earlier the the interesting thing and the beautiful thing to understand is is every bacteria works fun different functions yeah. in your body you know so so different bacteria are good for your heart your liver your brain your blood, you know, so the wider variety of ferments, yeah. the better. Um, so, you know, go to your local farmer's market, find somebody who's making good sauerkrauts, kimchi, uh, fermented, I've seen uh, uh, fresh squeezed coconut, or uh, fresh squeezed uh, cane juice oh, yeah, being that's fermented, good, yeah. which is a really nice beverage. Um, I've, I've, I, I believe, and I haven't been able to explore it, but I believe that the um, maple water that's used uh, to reduce to make maple syrup, sure. right? Uh, almost has the exact uh, uh, sugar content, mineral content as coconut water. Interesting. Um, so it's it's something interesting that I would love to pursue. And mm. if anybody out there is in that area, in Maple Country, Canada, you know, check it out. Uh, you know, take that maple water instead of turning it into a high fructose sugar syrup. <laughs> take that water and ferment it and make a, an amazing fizzy beverage out of mm. it. It's going to work. You know, you can ferment. You know, honey water. I mean, you could do water ferments. There's lots of, you know, you can get a good raw honey and, you know, do a green tea, kind of like a Jun style, you know, but look look for your kefir strain ferment opposed to your uh, kombucha ferments for that extra benefit that we talked about. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely agree with Elijah there is you want to have a variety of ferments. You know, if you're, if you're only buying one ferment a week, hey, get this one week, get the sauerkraut the next week, get pickled okra the next week, lacto-fermented, you know. I try so many different lactic acid fermentations in my house that I just create my own. I've shown some of the pictures on Instagram. Like I'm, right now, as I'm sitting here in Hawaii, I got a ferment on the counter uh, at my house just of uh, shredded up purple carrots. And I got uh, artichoke hearts, you know, just raw artichoke hearts that I uh, fermented with some cabbage. And I'm gonna get to enjoy that when I get home. Because here's the thing, like, Different bacteria grow on different substrates or different mediums. So the more wider variety, the more different bacteria you're gonna get, the more health benefits you could potentially get because as he said, all the different bacteria do a little bit different things. Another thing I wanna to talk to you about real quick um, is between like a coconut kefir like you're making here versus like a water kefir. So uh, you know, why would somebody wanna get a coconut kefir instead of a water kefir, for example? Because that's kind of more popular on the in the uh, you know in the mainland yeah where you where you don't have the coconut right you, yeah right. i mean the, the, the coconuts are superfood so yep. you know the extra benefit that you're getting from that is is the amount of nutrition that you're getting from the coconut you know by reducing it the sugar content from fermentation we don't add sugar we're fermenting only the natural sugar out of the coconut um, you know the extra added benefit of the coconut is the superfood nutritional content you know live biotics if you're getting a good ferment with your honey water ferments you know great you're getting good bacteria honey brings a lot of nutrition as well so if you're getting a good raw live honey you're getting that nutrition from it as well so it really like you said it's the base of that coconut is a superfood with the high nutrient co contents of it so it just makes it that much more powerful cool so the next thing I want to ask you, man, is I drank about half of this just sitting here and I'm feeling a little bit buzzed right now. Now, this is not an alcohol buzz, right? What kind of buzz is going on in my head? And I'm just kind of feeling mellow, relaxed right now. Like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, and is this well, normal? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it, it's normal. Yeah, it's, it's not an alcohol. So there's uh, zero alcohol, unlike kombuchas that probably contain some alcohol, even though they say it contains point under 0.05 or whatever. This contains absolutely none just based on the bacteria that's fermenting. It's not the kind that produces alcohol as a byproduct, right? Right, right. So, you know, that's that's that feel good factor. That's the feel good factor. We've, we've got a, a positive energy in the colon. 
uh, you were cleaning up that vagus nerve. You you've, you eat clean. You do yeah. that. You know, so you're just going to feel that lift. Wow. You know, like I want to go and I want to <laughs> do, and that's an important thing for for anybody to feel that and know what it feels like to be energized by food, not yeah. weighed down right. by food. You know, so if we're not eating good foods, you get done with the meal, you're feeling sluggish and lazy, and I want to sit down. You overate, you ate food that's not good for you, that, that you might not, it might be good for somebody else, but yeah. not good for you. So we gotta learn about our bodies, we gotta listen to it. Yeah. When we're cleaned up and we're consuming good products, we feel energized and that's, you know, food is energy. That's, that's what it is. That's why we're eating food is to power this body. You know, so, so that's what you're feeling. You're, wow. you're feeling the positive charge. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, there's foods that are, they're gonna feed you better and there feeds foods that are gonna not feed you as good and this is definitely one of the most uh, live foods that'll give you some energy charge so now i'm gonna go ahead and try this uh the coconut kefir you guys saw the process the coconut kefir cream since i tried the liquid there so we're gonna open this up so tell me what i should expect uh, in this uh so this is like the consistency of yogurt here right i want to yeah. show you guys the consistency there it almost almost will pour it's pretty thick though we're gonna go ahead and take a spoon here So look at that, nice sticks to the spoon, really nice and thick. We're gonna have a nice uh, scoop here. So tell everybody about uh, what I'm eating right now. Yeah, so you you know you got to watch us make this mm. as a young spoon wow. fermented. Um, you know what I use for flavorings for uh, for my products is uh, a little bit of stevia and uh, essential oils. Um, you know, so you know this particular one, I use a little vanilla cream stevia, the green leaf liquid drops. Um, uh, you know, stevia's got you know some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, I think a lot of times what happens is, is they try to use too much of it because mm -hmm. uh, it's not sugar. It's never going to be that, but it does give you the essence of sweet. So don't overuse it. Um, there's two different styles of stevia in the world. You've got a black and a white. Processing is different. So green leaf liquid stevia is the only one that I use. A few drops, you know, 10 drops in this whole jar. That's about it. Um, and then some of our drinks here, you know, the ginger lime that you had, that's uh, that's uh, essential oils, you know, wow. a couple drops of ginger and lime. You know, so that's very clean. It has extra added benefits to it as well. Um, and um, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we got. It's uh, a pure coconut, you know, and every one of my products, if you do get to come to Maui, you do get to try my product. Uh, you know, we've got original in every one. So if you don't love the stevia, yeah, yeah, right. you know, or the or the essential oil, some people doesn't work for them either. You know, I sell two to one the original, no added anything. Mm. You know, two to one sells. You know, so we've got a lot of purists here <laughs> uh, that really try to go to distance. You know, I'm I'm okay with a little bit of stevia and essential oils. You cool. know? So that's what we're using for flavoring, and um, and uh, this is the only other one you didn't get to try. So you're going to take a drink. Yeah, that. I'll do that. But uh, I wanted to comment real quick though on the on the kefir cream here that I just had like I, it's been i haven't eaten yogurt since I, I was a kid like a dairy based yogurt and i've had you know lots of different raw kefir yogurt things over the years but i gotta tell you that like this one right here the vanilla flavor it tastes the most like like a traditional dairy yogurt that i remember in my head but it's been like 20 over 20 years now it's so good like the texture is just like i'd say it's like perfect man it's just like it's just not too thick. I mean, I know it's difficult to get that texture, but but you've done an amazing job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's amazing. That was, that's that was, like uh, so good. That's like the best, like raw vegan live yogurt yogurt style <laughs> beverage I've ever had, or not even a beverage because it's not a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo yogurt style replacement. You yeah, know, that's been the beauty. You know, with uh, you know, 20 years now, I've been cooking uh, French culinary uh, sushi. Uh, you know, texture is everything. So yeah. as we're as we're rec recreating um, and and coming back and trying to use these positive products uh, to heal ourselves, you know, is is, is uh, you know matching that that texture. And and so this is uh, I just you know it just makes me happy every time I make it to to create something uh, that's so good for us, but yet contains that desirable flavors that yeah. we maybe once did consume. And so satisfying. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try the uh, the milk here. Mmm. Now that's a cultured milk. It's just not a standard milk, so it's got the beneficial probiotics of the the kefir here, in, in a little bit thicker format than the water, but thinner uh, than the cream there. I think I like it a lot, actually. That's actually quite good. I think if I had to rate them, I think this one go for number one. Like you got to get this if you come to Maui for sure. 
like and then I'd go for one of these and the milk I mean it's definitely good and I, I suppose if like if I was like mixing it in something I think it'd be good but drinking it straight I still like it but I mean of the three products I would say I like it the least <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah no but it's, it's cool it's, everybody's gonna be different and you guys might try one of these or the other you might like it more than me but that's just me yeah that's it you know i'll grab one of these and take on the road with me in the morning you know it's, it's a smooth it's got so much nutrition exactly in it that it's you know it's a it's a it's a morning smoothie because yeah you know, if i mix this in with like some fruits and blend it up maybe with some superfood powders oh my god it'd be off the hook yeah or yeah gluten-free you know granolas or anything like that you can yeah. use it you know or use it as the base for your smoothie so you add your superfoods and any other fruits to that you know so that way you're getting the coconut nutrition you're getting your biotics yep. you know so it's you know all very positive the biotics three different textures you yeah, know that's so it's cool. really like whatever whatever mood that you're in that you get to try a different product you know it uh you know this 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 was the 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 beginning was mm. to to make a gogurt you know yeah i wanted to make that gogurt style uh you know yummy creamy you know there was something nourishing about yeah, that, that I, told you I, yeah. I made it while i was on that you know the beginning Your stages cleanse. of my cleanses and so i reach to the core of my desire mm. and that's kind of where this came from was like wanting to match what my what my body was really desiring the most and giving it to the right way so this was what it was all about um, and and we're trying to use every part of this coconut we don't want any coconut to go to waste um, so you know this this product was developed as you know so we started here we went here then we then we came here so it was different ways of using it um, we make the fresh raw coconut milk not fermented that we deliver mm. locally to people using it and you know at the farmers market every weekend that we've got a, a, a fresh milk product um, and then by fermenting it we get that extra shelf life so it's a viable product that we can make mm. available to more people for a longer period of time and that's the beauty of being able to create a sustainable shelf stable product um, uh, that that allows that ability to, for people to shop and find it and take it home and, and uh, the, the old world style of pre food preservation yeah and that needs to come back because you know most days companies do high power high pet pressure pasteurization which kills all the probiotics in the food and if you guys are drinking your hpp juices that's killing all the bacteria both good and bad and while there's still some nutrition in there it's probably better than heat high heat foods or adding chemical metal metabisulfates and all these other preservatives you know right the best is natural foods naturally fermented foods that have a shelf life like this so last thing that i want to ask elijah here and let you guys know about is that unfortunately elijah does not ship all these foods or these coconut products around the world or even the country <laughs> he doesn't even ship them at all actually so unless you're on maui you guys are out of luck so i encourage you guys to visit maui and uh, you know so you could get and sample his amazing coconut products that i had the uh you know uh, fun of sharing with you guys on how they're made and the benefits of them i would also encourage you guys if you guys want these products hey it's not hard to do yourself you know get some coconut you know get the starter cultures there's plenty of other videos online that kind of go into detail on how to make yourself and make yourself right it's not a big deal but if you uh, are gonna be here on maui or if you're lucky to live on maui or come into maui Elijah, how can somebody, uh, you know, get connected and buy some of your amazing products here on island? Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, it's uh, on Maui right now. We do hope to start shipping to Oahu. Uh, as I did mention earlier, you know, we, we need to reforest Hawaii for more sustainable future. So we, we have a process of doing that. So, uh, so yeah, come to Maui. Uh, if you get to come to Maui, then, you know, you could try our products and uh, we're at all the local health food stores down to earth mana hawaiian moons hona Kauai farmers market uh there's a wonderful vegan uh health bar over in in lahaina called choice oh, okay. health bar and uh, i i supply them with all their raw coconut water and they've got a lineup of all my products there as well uh, some of our other local stores here carry my water and kefir products so you know we've got smaller stores and larger health food stores you know so that's we, we've we've got maui <laughs> taken care of pretty well and hopefully we'll be able to get over to oahu pretty soon shipping through down to earth so you'll be able to find them at down to earth in oahu as well uh, in the near future so awesome yeah and i'm going to encourage you guys if you guys live in areas where there's coconuts right start your own company to make a coconut keeper you just couldn't call it maui coconut keeper <laughs> <laughs> right. but yeah we want to create more small companies 
doing this kind of work because large companies, you know, they don't really have an interest in doing it the old fashioned way and making the highest quality product. They're just out to make a buck, right? And, uh, you know, here Elijah is trying to, you know, reforest and help reforest and get more coconuts planted on island, right? To create a greener and better planet. So Elijah, if somebody wants to check you out online and learn more about your company, um, you know, uh, can you tell everybody your website so they could uh, check it out? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, MauiCoconutKiefer.com, yeah, and you can find me on Facebook as well. Uh, I'm not I'm not into the tweeting world, you know. <laughs> so we're you know I'm a little bit country down here, and uh, but yeah, you can find me at MauiCoconutKiefer.com and and uh, Maui Coconut Kiefer on Facebook, and um, uh, you know stay stay in tune, stay in touch. Uh, we'll we'll try to keep the websites uh, uh, up and running and and uh, more education on on what we're doing and what we're going to do keep continuing to do to uh, to spread education, uh, health education, uh, and um, and promote as much as possible. Like you said, you know anybody has the ability to do it learn how to ferment, find ways to go back to that world and creating, creating these, uh, these nutrient rich foods for ourselves. Um, uh, there, uh, there's a one book I would actually recommend yeah. to you, The Wild World of Fermentation. Oh, cool. Uh, it gives you lots of ideas on how to ferment, you know, so that's, you know, go out there and learn how to do it. You know, we've it's not we've, hard. We've got a bunch of, we got a bunch of big strong men and, and uh, uh, Pacific Islanders here that's doing, uh, helping us, uh, c you know, climb the trees and crack the nuts and showing us how to do that. That part of it and uh, so my culinary education helped me come in and complete this side of the product you know and, and getting this out to the world like I said there's a lot of people out there that don't even here on Maui you know whether it's uh, age difference or ability to get a hold of coconuts and do them uh, fer fermentation is easy but it is a process yeah. you know you've got to you've got to be in your home you've got to be cooking and that's that that's 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 the world that we need to go back to just like you said you know the the idea of people out there making money on food uh, restaurants took a horrible turn yeah. many years ago because you know it used to be that a chef would open a restaurant because he wanted to serve his community he wanted to share his food and he took pride in what he was doing and then we came into this world where oh well I can make money off of this and so the value of what you're buying uh, in grocery stores and in, in restaurants is it's not about the value of the food it's about how much money they're going to make yeah. on selling you that food and that's you know those, those are questions you should ask yourself every Every time you go to put something in your mouth, where did this come from? Yeah. What's the source of this food? How is this actually helping me? Is this helping me? Am I eating for energy or am I eating for emotions? And that's a way that we can start taking back control of our system and making the right choices. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm drinking this stuff for energy. <laughs> that's right. Life. Cool. So Elijah, thanks for having me out today and allowing me to film and share, yeah. with, share some time with me and my, more importantly, my viewers. So you guys could know yet another fermented food, I would encourage you guys to make your on your own or buy here from Elijah if you're on Maui. Definitely one of my favorite things, especially after saving this stuff, saved me from my food poisoning. Like I'm totally back to normal after like one day. So I'm just grateful. So thank you for that. And he has many other testimonials from many other customers he's had over the years. It's quite amazing. So you never know how this stuff could help you until you try it. So uh, anyways, uh, with that, if you guys enjoyed this episode at the Hawaiian Superfood Company, learning more about the Maui Coconut Kiefer, hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. If I get a lot of thumbs up, next trip to Maui, I'll come back and uh, hang out with Elijah some more, make some more videos, uh, tell you guys more, the, maybe the process or some other cool stuff about uh, what he's doing here. Also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on any of my new and upcoming episodes I have coming out about every five to seven days. You never know where I'm gonna show up or what information you'll be learning that could possibly change your life. Also be sure to share this video with somebody, especially somebody who lives on Maui, right? If they live on Maui already, share this video so that they could be aware of this amazing company doing this amazing work, creating this local healthy food product for all that's here, for everybody here on Maui. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 450 videos on this YouTube channel now, dedicated to sharing with you guys all the different kinds of healthy plant-based foods in the world, including things like the co coconut kefir and hopefully an upcoming episode on the Maui Tempe Company. So uh, yeah, past videos, tons of knowledge so you guys could uh, amp up and get your diet tuned in so you could be healthier. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, 
keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, and uh, Maui, Coconut, Kiefer, they're always the best.